Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm Steve. Very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. This magnificent building dates from the 11th century. This is 900 years old? Yes. It's the oldest surviving part of the medieval palace of Westminster. The king would have been sitting on the throne at the far end. Like at the bottom of those stairs? Yes. He'd have been flanked by his senior advisors, members of his council. And this is where they had, as well as parliament, they had state trials. So people who were accused of really serious crimes against the king, against the state, were brought in here. Right, and so my 18 times and 19 times great grandfathers, both were uh, possible suspects in the, in the murder, if that's what it was, of King Edward II. So that's what I want to find out. Do we know what happened to Thomas and to Roger? Roger was bound and gagged and led here. Thomas was also brought in, they were under suspicion. Although they were high-ranking nobles, they stood to lose everything. They could lose their lives, the death penalty was enforced for such serious crimes. Was it a fair trial? We have some documents relating to both their trials. Um, if you want to go up to the records. Yes, I'm dying to. <laughs> These are copies of the original proceedings from Parliament, which Terrible copy, Roger <laughs> and Thomas were summoned to. This first one deals with Roger's trial. You may just be able to pick out here um, in one of the accusations against him the word Roger. Um, it's in medieval French. Why French? Because it was the language of government from the time when England was taken over by William the Conqueror, they were Normans. Roger is being accused not only of taking on royal power himself, mm -hmm. but then of murdering the king. These accusations would have been read out in the hall that we've just been to. So once they read the accusations and all these people are around and he's bound and gagged. So he wasn't able to answer them. He's not accorded the dignity of a proper trial. And then what happened? They give judgment on him. It's very swift. This is judgment as in, a, like, the ruling? Yes. Render just and lawful judgment on the said Roger as is appropriate for such a person who is truly guilty of all the above noted crimes, and particularly the article touching the death of the Lord Edward, awarded and adjudged that the said Roger be drawn and hanged as a traitor and an enemy of the king and of the realm. Ooh, it's going to be hung. Not only just hung, he was drawn, which means yeah, what does that mean? he was uh, placed on an ox hide and that was attached to two horses and they dragged him from the Tower of London where he was being kept. All through town? All through town, two miles of that on oh bumpy God, streets. That's the worst story I've ever heard. Okay. He would have not been in a, a good condition. And then they hung there. him in front of everybody? He was hanged as a common thief. Yes. Oh, this is horrible. I mean, he obviously did a horrible, horrible crime. Yes. Okay, it's, um, all right, so Roger is gone now. And then what happens to Thomas? Thomas was summoned at the very same time as Roger, and he is tried on the same day. Oh, boy. We have a copy of the Rolls of Parliament dealing specifically with Thomas. Okay. He is actually accorded more of a, a proper trial than Roger was. Mm -hmm. Just read the first paragraph here. Okay. Thomas of Barclay, knight, came before the Lord King in his full aforesaid parliament. He wishes to acquit himself of the death of the same king and says that he was never an accomplice, nor did he ever know of his murder until this par present parliament. If you remember... That seemed a little odd. Roger Mortimer, he and Isabella told everyone Edward II had died of natural causes. So it would be a, a surprise to Thomas that he was that murdered. He was murdered. Or, so he's, he's trying to castle make us his wasn't excuse. That big. There's a lot of talkers, I'm sure, around that castle. And, and it's been three years. Yes. Or almost yes. three years. No one's said anything. It's just a big shock when he gets to Parliament. Okay. It does seem very spurious. And the aforesaid Thomas says that at the time when it is said the Lord King was murdered and killed, he was detained with such and so great an illness outside 
the aforesaid castle at Bradley that he remembers nothing of this. So he gives this long excuse about where he was and how he had no idea. Yes. I was so sick. You were, you I was were, at another I was castle. I, 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 I prefer to be yes. at another place when I'm sick as opposed to my own bed. It's almost as though he's giving such uh, a lengthy, detailed, detailed yeah. doth protest too much. Yes. There's some kind of There's something suspicious fishy, some, yeah, yeah. So, something. So there. what happened to him? The jury then comes back and this is their deliberation. On Thomas Barclay. Therefore the jurors came thereupon before the Lord King and his parliament at Westminster, who say on their oath, Thomas of Barclay is not guilty of the death of the aforesaid Lord King Edward. Wow. So Thomas has been found not guilty of the murder of Edward II. Mm -hmm. Luckily for you, otherwise you wouldn't be around today, he oh, survived. Wow. That is lucky, I didn't even think about that. Oh, thank you, Parliament. Okay, this is one of the greatest soap operas I've ever heard. And it's not finished yet. If we go back to your family tree, Thomas de Barclay's son, Morris de Barclay, then marries... Elizabeth de Spencer. Yes. De Spencer? Do you remember? That's the, her, where, how's she related to Hugh? She's the youngest daughter. Elizabeth is the youngest daughter of Hugh Dispenser, the big financial wizard of Edward II? Yes. The Barclays have now joined with the Dispensers. So Elizabeth Dispenser is my 17 times great-grandmother, which makes Hugh Dispenser, who was Edward II's ally and Thomas de Barclay's enemy, my other 18 times great-grandfather. And I learned yesterday that my 19 times great-grandfather, Roger Mortimer, had Hugh Dispenser executed. <laughs> that there, this is messed up stuff. Why would you marry off your son to the daughter of your enemy? I think you need to go to the College of Arms <laughs> There's and more? find out a little this bit more is... about your family. Wow. It's just a dramatic story. I'm, I'm a little, I'm surprised. Thomas de Barclay's son, Morris de Barclay, marrying Elizabeth de Spencer, daughter of Hugh de Spencer, who was killed by Roger Mortimer. I would have thought those families were enemies. So how were those two together? And how did it all happen? 